Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather coming at you with another video. In this update, we're going to be talking about my early thoughts on January as it's trending colder and then it looks to turn frigid as we go deeper into January. So before I do get started, if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. And I do ask you to share this video with your friends and family on social media. All right, so let's get started. Here is the overall anomalies as we went into December of a very active uh, hurricane season, which we had. So we went back and looked at the overall uh, active hurricane seasons of the last 20 years, and we found that 1999, uh, 2010, 1995, as well as 2005 were all very active. And then what actually happened in the Decembers uh, after that? And so, and this was a blend of all those, all those uh, analog years. And if we put that together, this is actually what it looked like. So we had well above average temperatures in those years in the north central part of the of the U.S., above average for the western part, a little bit slightly above average for uh, in parts of Texas, and then uh, below average, if not well below average, for a good chunk of the southeast, and then neutral to a little bit above average for New England going into Maine. And so here is actually what the temperatures look like for December so far and we only have like five or six days left and so it's pretty much did it pretty good I mean we've had above average temperatures for the north central uh, U.S. Uh, above average temperatures for the west uh, neutral to if not a little bit below average for Texas and then uh, below and if not well below average especially for uh, Florida pretty much nailed it and then it tr started trending neutral just like those blended models did for uh, New England and went above average as we got into Maine. So that actually did a pretty good job. And so going forward, let's look at the teleconnections as we go into January and kind of set the stage of what it actually might kind of play out uh, for the month. And so you can see the, the uh, North Atlantic Oscillation, which is the NAO, as well as the AIO, uh, Arctic Oscillation, has been pretty much neutral to sometimes positive, sometimes negative. But as we go into January, it's pretty much congruent now. All model agreement is on board as it's trending in a negative direction, if not going strongly negative as we get into the first week of January, going into the second week of January. And typically when that happens is you have a, a blocking pattern kind of set up over a uh, uh, Greenland and that allows kind of the ridge to form allows troughs to come through uh, the, the central and eastern parts of the U.S. setting the stage for an active period and it also it's kind of slows down the systems that they've become a little bit less progressive and that allows that colder air to kind of get trapped and, and push it a little bit further southward than what you've kind of experienced in December just because it's going to be able to hang around a little bit longer than what it could be in uh, December. And if we look at the uh, the other tele teleconnections that I look at is the PNA, which is the Pacific North Atlantic, as well as the Eastern Pacific Oscillation. And so as here, you can kind of see the trend also. It's been pretty much positive to neutral. And then as we go deeper into January, it goes a little bit stronger uh, positive, and that typically builds the ridge in the western part of the U.S., allowing the trough to dig down deeper into the central U.S., and especially goes towards the east. And then we also see the EPO, which is the Eastern Pacific Oscillation, also trending on a downward trajectory. So we, we're seeing kind of model congruency as we go into uh, January for a much colder pattern for the central and eastern parts of the U.S. And so as we kind of take you through the anomalies and what what this looks like as far as an NAO going negative and if not strongly negative in January. So if we took uh, all the anomalies back for the last since 1985, we found several. We actually found four which had strong negative NAOs in January. And so we went back and did some research. It was 1985, 1987, 2010, as well as 2011. And so 2011 was the most recent one. 
And if we took the, all the blended models together, this is what the Januaries looked like for those years. And it has pretty much below average temperatures for the central and eastern parts of the U.S., if not well below average for the southeast parts and especially like places like Florida, getting into the northeast and then slightly to neutral as we get trended a little bit further westward. But this has a colder pattern uh, setting the table for uh, January. And I'll go over a couple of the parameters and why I think that is actually going to play out. So if we take a look at the AO and the NAO, this is what the warm phases look like if they, if they were actually positive, which we experienced uh, last January. And we had those high pressures kind of setting up and then we could never get any blocking setting up or anything. That it was pretty much a warmer time frame over the United States. But now that it's trending negative, we have that Greenland block kind of setting up and those troughs will extend from the northwest, go through the central part of the U.S., go through uh, and then kind of come up the coast and set up an active period. And here's kind of like your... Uh, typical warm uh, AO and NAO, which is kind of more of a like a, a zonal flow. It kind of pretty much as a kind of a, a milder pattern. The jet stream never typically dips. And then of course, then you have your negative NAO where you have it, the, the jet stream rises in the north and west and kind of buckles and then digs down that Arctic air, pours in that frigid air, and then has that Greenland block over uh, the, the northeast. And so as we take you through then kind of what it looked like. Here's the what the Climate Prediction Center has for January, which they pretty much have. It's more of a probability guidance. Uh, they pretty much have a traditional La Nina, right? And here's your traditional La Nina. And about 70% of the time, this is typically what happens in La Nina, where you have more of a, a zonal flow and you you can't really pull in that all Arctic air, um, you know, it, nothing gets trapped or nothing gets blocked and it, it pretty much a warm air across the board and this is kind of what they have for their guidance for january and here's what i think is going to happen which typically only happens about 30 percent of the time so remember those anomalies this has not happened in january if it takes place like i think it does since 2011 so we could be experiencing the coldest january in 10 years and since 2011 because i do think we're going to have a little bit more wintry uh, la nina where the jet stream buckles and allows that colder air to kind of funnel in through the central and eastern parts of the u.s and then kind of pull out and then it gets trapped and it gets less progressive and that colder air pushes a little bit further south and sets the stage for a little bit more active pattern that will be what we saw in uh, December. Then here's another look at it. Um, also the sea surface temperatures. And I kind of looked at the, looked at this at the other day and we're starting to see a trend here where the last several years, this area right here below Alaska, which was what, what they call the Victorian PDO. This is what they essentially had like a warm blob. And it's what typically started back in about 2016, definitely prevalent the last couple of winters where we had this warm blob form over the over the winter months, developed, developed the, uh, the ridge and then pulled down the colder air more towards the western parts of the U.S., and then lifted the ridge port in more of the central and eastern parts of the U.S. But what we're kind of seeing is, is a little bit more traditional PDO kind of forming and having those warm sea surface temperatures form a little bit further south and also more towards the coast. And that actually is starting to develop. We're starting to see hints of it because we're starting to see a little bit more active snow pattern than what we, what we saw last December. And I think this actually even picks up as we go into January because this last 15 day trend these sea surface temperatures are only getting a little bit warmer especially as they head towards the coast and this will develop uh the ridge further uh further towards the coast and as that trough digs down that will not not go towards the western parts of the u.s but will hit towards more the central u.s and align it more towards the central and then eastern parts two-thirds of the u.s so i do think that's going to play out and also the Enzo. So as we saw, we saw the developing La Nina form back in September the 10th, and it trended strongly negative. I mean, it, it was on a beeline, and I, and I would say around Halloween, it was more towards a strong La Nina. And that's what we were kind of seeing. 
But after starting to get in the first week or two in November, we started to see that trend line that was it was coming out of kind of coming out of a strong a stronger La Nina. And ever since then, it's been kind of flat to neutral, but a little bit slightly uh, weaker. So now it's instead of almost a two negative two deviation, we're only looking at a negative one deviation, which that more or less puts it a little bit less of a weaker La Nina. And we're starting to see the trend and that will actually force the P&A a little bit more positive. And I do think this trend slightly continues as we go deeper into the into the winter months. So now let's kind of take you through. This is a map of uh, all the way up there in Siberia. I mean, this is on the 28th. So this is what this is like southern Russia going towards Mongolia. We've got a massive Arctic high pressure developing. This is on the 28th. We're talking two days from now of a, almost a 1062, if not almost maxes out at 1066 Arctic high pressure millibar. I mean, we're talking some negative 60 below temperatures in this cold core and even even this this huge area this is 101 you know 1050 1046 this is some extremely colder air that's going to be uh, developing in east asia and this will actually kind of start to filter uh further south as we go towards uh january and so as we look at now canada this is on the first so that was on the 28th this is the first we see a piece of that cold air start to trend a little bit further south head towards canada and now we're seeing some of those uh some of those temperatures uh, these are actual temperatures of 30 35 degrees below zero and you can kind of see that trend line a little bit pushing a little bit further south as we start getting into uh, january and then by the fifth we'll start to see uh, the first signs of the polar vortex starting to kind of weaken i think that we'll have several stages of the polar vortex because it's been very strong as of late and it'll start to weaken and we'll have what they call a reflective event, which will send a pulse down further south into the U.S. and bringing some of that colder Arctic air, especially as we get towards the 5th of January. And then I think this actually continues as we go deeper uh, into January. So if we look at the 500 millibar uh, pattern by January 5th, I think that's when this Arctic air kind of really starts to develop and starts to really start to entrench into uh, the US at least the start of it because we that's typically looks like we start the the negative NAO blocking pattern setting up over Greenland and this will have a ridge that these troughs will develop and every several days will allow to funnel down into the central and eastern parts of the U.S. and becoming, like, like I said, less progressive, dumping those colder air. And as that colder air pushes from Siberia, from Canada, deeper into the United States, um, it'll allow this these colder temperatures to get pushed further south because we have the blocking pattern set up and the tele teleconnections are, for are forecast of forcing the uh, upper level winds to push it a little bit further south than what you actually saw in, uh, in December. And then another thing going forward is we actually have what they call a sudden stratospheric warming event uh, take place. Now this actually doesn't happen every single year. And in fact, it never even took place next last year, but it did actually uh, take place in January. If you recall, uh, in 2019, it was around this time in, in uh, 2018 going into 2019 that we saw a major sudden uh, uh, stratospheric warming event take place in the Arctic. We saw those really frigid temperatures uh, developing over Siberia that will actually kind of get displaced. We'll have a displacement in the polar vortex. And this is by the fifth again. This is a stratospheric look. So by the 5th, it looks like kind of all model agreement now of the European model has this uh, taken place in the Arctic. Now, this will take several weeks to actually transfer down into the surface. So but once we feel this uh, displacement of the polar vortex, if you recall last time this happened, uh, Illinois hit 38 below zero on January 30th, 2019, when we had a major disruption of the polar vortex. So 
this is what potentially is on the table again as that colder air will get entrenched. So I think it's going to be a several prong approach from the polar vortex as we'll have pulses coming down a more of a reflective event starting with a weakening polar vortex as we get into the early part of January but as we head towards the middle of January and especially towards later into the last half of January the third and fourth week of January that's when I think we'll start to feel the effects of this sudden stratospheric warming event to in the surface in the United States with some very frigid polar air uh, funneling in. But in the meantime, a very active pattern with a negative NAO block over the United States will allow systems to funnel in from the central and eastern parts and becoming the pattern a little bit less progressive and kind of slow down and pushing the colder air uh, further south than what you've seen as of late. So that is my initial thoughts on uh, January. I, sh I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Uh, do like this video. Uh, definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.